I started out looking for stuff, not knowing um, what I was looking for. It's basically like searching for a needle in a haystack, but you don't know what a needle looks like. Um, I knew it was going to be difficult to find. I just didn't know what exactly made these flutes have the right sound to them. I don't even know the difference between major and minor keys, let alone the difference between a key and a scale. Um, it's a dead and dying knowledge, unfortunately, when you're trying to find something that will play music, true pagan music that's native to the Isles and further north. That is a dead and dying... Unfortunately, you know, for whatever reason, that kind of music... It's not like Native American flutes, which are everywhere, which if you're trying to play that kind of pagan music, yes, stuff something like that, Asiatic flutes even, they're everywhere. But this really is, you know, you come across one every once in a blue moon, and when you don't even know what the fuck you're looking for, then it becomes really difficult to find. So that's why it took me so long. And I'm hoping, showing you these today, um, and also check out, if you want to, check out um, my top five flute makers. Most of the flutes in this video today actually are in that video as well. Um, because that will give you some places to look uh, if you're trying to find something. But hopefully this is going to show people what to look for and, and skip that many plus years of the learning curve that I had to find out all on my own. Um, if you know what the needle looks like, you can find it probably six times faster. You probably find it in one year instead of six. So um, we're going to start out with um, something that actually I, I literally just got. It's not even in my, my all my flutes video. It didn't make it for that because I literally just got it and I wasn't expecting to get another one. I had 10 and I thought that was... <laughs> I thought that was going to be all, and then just this happened to be the very last one that I obtained. And really, to be honest with you, I do not think I'm getting another one. Um, there's only so much that someone, that one, one single person needs. And so, you know, all these different things that I have, they all do different things. I don't know, I don't have anything that is, you know, parallel exactly uh, to the way it sounds or what it does. Um, the key sometimes is the same but it's different enough. And actually I've got three in the same key, but they're all so, so different from one another. They have a different, what I call voice to them. You, you see what I mean by that in a minute. And actually there's something to be said about the key because for whatever reason, the majority of these either are in D sharp, D flat, or G sharp, G flat. Something about those keys, and I don't know what it is about D sharp. I guess I just really fucking like that key. Um, but you know, th there's something to be said about the fact that it seems like those are the easiest ones to make work. I'm not going to say those are the only ones, because I think up to a certain point it becomes your personal preference. Um, there's one random B flat in here as well. Uh, so I'm going to start out with the F sharp slash G flat, same thing. Um, so this one again is the last one that I obtained. It is, I'm still kind of breaking it in. Some flutes need a bit of seasoning for them to sound perfect. So it's still got that kind of new harsh sound to it. Um, but it's good enough, I think, for, for an example. And again, I'm not a, an expert player. You'll see me make mistakes. You know, I'm still learning alongside you. And so I can't play it phenomenally. I can't play it professionally. But I can play it well enough, definitely, for you to see the overall energy and know what it sounds like. So yeah, 
it's a nice little food it just needs a bit of breaking in is all uh, next one we're going to do is its sister or brother or whatever you want uh, this one is made by the same person it's just in a different key the same type of diatonic scale this has to be one of my favorite keys apparently because i have three different <laughs> three different flutes in this in the same key various different scales various different styles uh, so I guess I just really fucking like that key. D sharp, um, D sharp slash E flat. Um, very difficult to find this key. Uh, you can find F sharp usually easier than you can find D sharp. But I mean, it's worth it's worth it when you finally find somebody who who makes it. It's worth grabbing um, because it's just got an energy to it. Um, that it's difficult to replace and I say that it's not the only key but it's just that's like that um, the B flat's like that the F sharp's like that too but it's just um, because they're so difficult to find this this is you know ironically I have three but it took me six years to find three you see what I'm saying so uh, let's see how this swing goes It's just got a really wild and um, untamed sound to it. It's, it's mystical, and that's just what I love about it. This is also a D sharp, so that's E flat, but it may be in a different scale, I'm not sure. It's an old fashioned type penny whistle. Uh, it's Norse um, style, and it's, um, it's just got uh, the way that it's crafted. Um, it just has an overall better voice to it. Um, it is a little bit more difficult to play because it requires a lot more breath control even in the first octave um, You know typically in the first octave it doesn't most flutes don't require this much breath control But the sound of it you can't beat the sound of it I know they're all my favourite, but this has to be Tibby Top favourite. I mean, it's I I, I can I won't say the favourite, but it's it's really it, it's up there. Um, so our next one being the last D sharp. Out of all of them, this is the most difficult to play just because it runs off a of half steps. Um, it's not the type of pentatonic scale that is um, native to the Isles, I don't believe. It's because if it was, you wouldn't have to do half step. Like they, they, they specialise in making it the old fashioned way out of a raw tree branch, which I can really appreciate. flutes now this one is actually immaculately straight compared to most of them but if you turn it at the right angle you can still see kind of the, the kinks and knobs in it this is G sharp uh, remember we were doing G flat slash F sharp first okay so this is G sharp 
I just fall in love with this the, this, the sound of it is you'll notice that especially when you get into forest flutes you'll notice that each individual brat has its, has its own varying voice and this has got a voice on it that's so unique I just love it Again, one of my ultimate, ultimate, I mean, I really, they're, they're all, I, I really can't, I keep saying my favourite, my favourite. That's why I had to do seven of them, because I just couldn't narrow it down. But yes, one of my favourites. This is a gin's horn, it's actually made from salvaged cattle horn sheath, and it's eco-friendly, because they, they, when they butcher the cattle, they literally take everything that's, any little thing that's edible. Even the cuts that most people in some of these other countries would just throw away. They take those, they eat it, then they salvage the horn, the teeth, the skull, the bone, everything that they can so that nothing is wasted. Um, I wish that more countries would do it. You may want to turn your volume down just so it doesn't, just in case, but I'm going to try to scoot back far enough so that it doesn't. It is just the most eerie, um, uh, untamed sound, to, and that's really what Jim Swan is supposed to sound like. Um, but it's just, I mean, the, the energy, the voice of it, it's just, um, it, even though it's only got one octave, it is just really, it's, it's a lot to be said. Um, and then the last we've got, last but not least, Ironically, the very first one that I found that worked, the very first one that I, that showed me and taught me, okay, what does a needle look like? You know, before this, I was trying to find a needle in a haystack and I didn't know what the needle looked like. This helped me figure it out. This is the first minor key that I came across. This is B flat. B flat is actually a little more common. You can find it a lot easier. This has got two and a half octaves without any breath control, which is another thing that I, I, it's very rare to find that. And I really appreciate that. Again, this has to be one of my favorite, ultimate favorites because of that right there. Such an easy transition between octaves without that breath control. But because of that, it is quite sensitive. And if you try to just a hair more forceful by accident, it wants to jump to the next octave up. So you really got to, to play it gently or it is going to say, oh, you want to go to the next stop. So that's the only bad thing about it. You've got to train your breath to be exact. Um, this, there's so much more that you can do on this that I can't even do yet. But I'm going to try to do it justice for you.